This is Steve, and you're watching Entering Into Space. <laughs> Man, have I been procrastinating. It's bad. I, I should have put out a video sooner, but I haven't. I haven't done a video in a while. It's been a month. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my uh, followers, followers, subscribers, that's the word. <laughs> it's like I was in a cult or something. Uh, one of my subscribers uh, pointed out to me the other day, he was like, hey, you okay? I haven't seen anything from you in a while. Content, you need more. So appreciate that, HO, model trains, and scenery. I'm here for you. Anyway, what's new? Uh, a lot, a lot is new. And, oh, oh, and astrophotography. What's new in astrophotography? Well, I got some new gear. I've got a ZWO uh, automatic focuser. And I've also started using Nina, which here in a little bit, I'm gonna move over to the computer. I'm gonna show you a real rough, how I've set it up and some of the tools that Nina has and some of the features that it has and why I switched um, from APT. Not that APT has anything wrong with it, it's just uh, right now APT doesn't do a multi-star periodic autofocus and um, uh, now that I've got an autofocus, it's something that I would like to leverage and take advantage of. I did have it on the uh, Skywatcher Newtonian for a while and I'll show you an image that I took with it using Nina and using the autofocuser um, of NGC 7822. But, uh, but now I want to shoot for the first time, for me, I want to do a really good uh, narrow band, not narrow band, broadband RGB uh, image with the 1600 and the uh, 80 millimeter uh, APO of the, of the Andromeda Galaxy M31. So I've never shot M31 with a mono camera. So really excited about that. Putting this automatic focuser on the Skywatcher was pretty easy. Uh, I just had to remove the coarse focus knob and the, um, the locking screw. I kind of had to use, uh, the, it comes with an assortment of doodads. Um, so I was able to kind of makeshift the thing on there. It worked, it was on, it was steady, it was rock steady. Rock steady. And it worked, it did good. Um, with the mead, however, this is one of those times that I just wanted to curse the engineers for the way they made something. And I ended up having to take the whole bottom focuser. I can't really show you. But anyway, I ended up having to take the whole bottom focuser off. See if I can spin it around. So you definitely, if you get one of these things, you're always gonna go wanna pull the coarse knob off. If you've got a 10 to one reduction focuser, you know, leave that alone. So, um, but I ended up having to Google where the set screw was for the co coarse focus knob and it was hidden. Yeah, hidden. So I found it, I pulled it off. I've got it all bolted up and I haven't tested it yet because I just put it on yesterday and I haven't had clear skies, maybe Sunday. So, but it is so cool to sit out there and adjust this thing without ever having to get up, without having to use a batten off mask, without having to put the batten off mask on and then adjust at the scope and then look at the screen and adjust at the scope and look at the screen. How many of y'all know about that? Yeah. And when you wear glasses like I do, because you can't see up close, you're doing this and this and this. So this actually, uh, just in and of itself, if the autofocus didn't work, um, 
it's, it's amazing just to be able to sit at your computer and autofocus. And for those of you out there who haven't had one and you're thinking about getting the ZWO EAF autofocuser, and you're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna hit a button and I'm gonna watch it focus in and out. Well, it's not, it's not how it works. It does steps. It goes in and out. And you set the steps when you actually set up your ASI, um, the focus driver. So, or your ASCOM driver, that's what I was trying to say. Anyway, um, yeah, but other than that, bolts on good. And right now I just need to just need to test it. So that's let's test it together because literally I have not adjusted the focus with the scope um, through Nina with the autofocus are hooked up. So let's go outside, even though it's uh, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, so we're not gonna see any stars. But I can run through Nina, I can show you how to kind of adjust the autofocus. You know, there's no way to really track the um, backspace, backspace. Backlash. You know, I wonder how many times you guys actually count the number of words I say wrong, but still leave in the video, because I'm real like that. Anyway, we're gonna go over to the computer outside, go to the hooch, fire up Nina, take this big hunkin' telescope out there, hook everything up, and uh, just kind of run through um, how I set up a sequence, which is really cool. You're really gonna like that. So, all right, let's get over to the computer. All right, so here we are in the living room. And why are we in the living room? Because it's raining outside. But I brought the hooch in, you know, I'm just like Dylan O'Dolan with my Sky Shed pod, you know, good day. Uh, except for way smaller. Anyway, and I can't, I can't get in it. But I want to show you uh, Nina. Yeah, so I've, I was using APT and now I've moved over to Nina. So let's, uh, let's get it fired up. First thing I have fired up here is the, um, Stellarium, and I'm going to show you how these two work together. Uh, so let's fire up Nina, and I got the scope in the house behind me, as you can tell. Or were you like, what is that? <laughs> All right, so what Nina does is uh, it allows you to create a profile, kind of like Sequence Generator Pro, and I've named mine Entering in Space. Well, pretty, pretty snazzy. And so I'm going to load that profile. Let's expand it. And so the, the way Nina is set up, the first time you get into it, you're going to have, you're going to see these tabs. And we're just going to run down through top to bottom here. The equipment tab is basically going to have all your equipment. And what it does is this is the equipment tab and it shows the choices that you have in here. So uh, what you, you know, first thing it's going to do is going to come into camera. Now there is a button down here that says connect and what it'll do is it'll connect everything all at once, hit it once, boop, and everything connects. Your filter, your focuser, your rotator, your scope, your camera, everything connects. But it also connects auto guiding. And I really don't want to do that because I'm, if I'm trying to get my camera cooled down while I'm doing my uh, polar alignment, I do polar alignment through sharp cap and I don't want uh, the 290 to be fought over by sharp cap and phd2 so i basically manually turn everything on you know so getting started at night i'm going to click uh, connect and this little cog here if i click that that's going to bring up your your native driver that you have for whatever camera you have i typically i, I don't typically i have a zwo so it's going to bring up the ascom driver or the zwo tab for that uh, and it's like that for every choice that you make so Basically, these two uh, graphs here are telling me cooling power, how much power it's drawing, and the chip sensor temperature. And right now, uh, I did have it on prior, so it's warming back up, you see. Uh, but if I hit this little frosty button, a little snowflake, <laughs> I'm not a snowflake. Uh, uh, it's gonna start cooling. And now you can see it's kind of holding off. And I guess the cool power is for folks who are using like a battery to power their gear, um, just to kind of know what kind of power you're drawing. Uh, so you, you know, my fan's coming on now, I can hear it, so it's starting to cool. Uh, so next one here is the filter wheel. And I'm gonna click it. And I'm gonna jump ahead really quick on this filter wheel, cause that's something you need to know if you're using an eight position filter like I am. Uh, so let's go over here to the options tab and we're going to go to equipment setup. So look at this filter wheel. I have an eight position filter wheel. I just said that. And 
position, for some reason Nina has position zero. Well, I was like, I don't know, because my eighth position is my dark filter for when I'm shooting dark frames. Uh, so I went in here and I put my dark frame up here and I'm like, my position one is luminance and my position two is red. And my position three is green. Nope, that's not how it works. So shot a whole bunch of frames with the wrong filter. So basically position zero is one. That's where my luminance is and then so on and so forth. So position seven here in Nina is my dark frame. So that is your eight different positions. That's pretty critical. So let's go back to the equipment tab. So we've turned it on. Uh, focuser, I'm gonna turn on the autofocuser. And you know, like I said, if I click the cog tab, it's gonna allow me to make some, some native adjustments to this, on the ZWO platform here. And telescope, we're gonna click it. And it gives me this warning every time about J2000. I'm not really sure. Uh, so when you click it, obviously the scope comes uh, parked. So you see it's saying unpark the scope. And just so you know, there's been many a times that I've chosen a target in Nina and I went slew and nothing happened. And I was like, ah, it doesn't work. Let me go get on Facebook and, and cry. Um, no. You gotta unpark it first. So once you get set up in here and you're ready to go, you gotta remember you gotta come over here and unpark it, which typically I forget to do. And I hit slew to target and nothing happens. And then I'm like, don't. Uh, so anyway, right now it's not giving you any coordinates. I can manually enter coordinates in here uh, and hit and slew to them. You know, one thing about Nina, it gives you a lot of ways to do one thing. Um, there's a lot of ways to slew to a target in Nina, this being one of them. It's not the one that I use though. So, um, and then like I said, we're not gonna turn the auto guider on. Even though I have PhD2 started here, uh, I can click auto guider and it's connected. And the really cool thing is it does import. If I come over here to the imaging tab, you can see your graph. So you don't have to really switch back and forth to see what's going on. Um, it's gonna tell you your total RMS error. You can clear it right here. So that's really cool. Uh, back to the equipment tab, everything is set up. I'm happy. Um, and now I want to choose a target. So this is where Nina is really cool. Uh, so if I come over here, let's minimize Nina because I like Stellarium. Some people use other programs, but I like Stellarium. And so I can scroll around in here in Stellarium. Hey, there's my yard and there's the bloody net fence that I had to put up because that guy won't turn his light off. And my fence is all jacked up. I don't even know why I did that. And I didn't take the time to cut the sky out in between the trees, so whatever. Uh, so you, you can see this is the correct time of day. I've turned the uh, twilight or to turn the sky off so that you can, as if there was no sun and we were in the middle of Armageddon. Uh, so let's choose a target here. Oh, so I was already looking at this earlier. So. Here's the great star cluster in Hercules. Hercules, Hercules. So here it is here, all right? So I've just clicked on it and it says it right here. That's all I've done. I'm gonna minimize it. I'm gonna go back in here to Nina and the image source that it's gonna pull is from the NASA, the NASA Sky Survey. And this little teardrop here, if I hover over it, you see it says, get coordinates from planetary software, which I've set up. And I click that and it's populated the coordinates. It's brought in a NASA sky survey image. Is that not cool or what? Look at that. There's the image. So I don't know if you can see, I'll zoom in on it, but you see here's our right ascension and declination coordinates. If I move this box, you see they change. Look at that. So let's say oh, for some reason I want to off center it right there. Oh, and by the way, this box is drawing information that I've pre plugged in that I need to change since I'm switching back to the 80 millimeter. But this is the box that my eight inch Skywatcher Quattro, um, this is the field of view of that coupled with the ASI 1600 chip size. So this is the field of view that that eight inch Newtonian gave me. So I'm gonna offset it like that. I'm gonna say, yeah, I wanna do something like that. Right there, you see the change. Um, I can slew to target 
here at this button. So let's just say I wanna, I wanna slew to it and I wanna really work on my focus and just check on it first. Um, I'm gonna do this, slew to target. And I did it on film. <laughs> Look, you gotta come back over here <laughs> to the equipment tab and you gotta freaking unpark it. See, that was not staged, people. That was real stuff. All right, go back in the sequencing, wait, framing tab. So let's slew to the target now. And even though we're in the living room, we're just mock. And yeah, it's going to the target. So it's, this is my uh, east side. And so it's coming up here about 10 o'clock. So I like it, I've slewed to it, okay? I'm cool with it, but I wanna add this as a sequence. So this is the first time I've, I've been on this target. I wanna add it as a sequence. I wanna add it as a target that I wanna take pictures of. So I'm gonna say add a sequence. And that immediately, see it dropped me down here to my sequencing tab. And just so you know, I didn't skip over the Sky Atlas um, because I forgot about it. I skipped over it because I don't know how to use it. Maybe I'll figure it out one day. I go straight to the framing plane. And Flats Wizard we're not talking about right now. We're just gonna go in down here to the sequencing tab. So in the sequencing tab, you'll notice that it's got these little chevrons or arrows right here. Um, and it comes populated with like this generic target. As if I wanted to skip all these tabs and go straight to the sequencing and hand program these in and go to the target. But, it sucks because I could be in a hurry and not realize that I'm not clicked on the target that I just put in there. It comes already selected to this generic target. So I could take all this time and plug all these features in and turn all this stuff on and realize I did it all to the wrong target. I've done that before. So I like to just come in here and close it out. So here's this, here's the, uh, the instance or the sequence or the target great uh, cluster in Hercules. There's the name, there's the right ascension and declination coordinates from adjusting the box. And now we've got to build a sequence. And so these little plus buttons and slew buttons are gonna go between your different targets. So I could have a star cluster here, I could have a nebula, I could have a galaxy, and they'll just keep populating throughout here. This space down here is gonna tell you what's going on with that sequence or with that target. So first line item is enabled on I'm gonna change the total number to let's say 30 frames it's 30 frames the time that I want it's in seconds so I'm gonna backspace and I'm gonna say 120 seconds that's two minutes two and two who remembers that uh, the type of frame it's a light frame the filter we're gonna use is our luminance see I've already plugged those in we're gonna bend one by one. I want to dither. I want to dither on every other frame. And the gain's already set. So there's my luminance run. So now all I gotta do is come down here and hit the plus button. And I've added the same sequence. Everything's copied over. All I gotta do now is just change the filter. Add the plus button. Change the filter to green. Plus button. Change the filter to blue. So here's my whole set okay these tabs up here are really cool because what I can tell it to do is after I've hit this play button see this is like a start to see it's a start sequence so upon hitting that I can say I want it to start the guiding by itself when I hit this start sequence it's going to slew to the target well guess what it's close to the target now because we've already slewed to it just to see because we we're impatient but we could still be in the park position setting all this up so we're going to say, yes, let's go ahead and slew to the target. And yes, we want to center it. That engages your plate solving. Okay. Um, we can also come down here if you have an autofocuser. And we can say, upon hitting this button, when everything's settled, I want to do an autofocus right before I start taking my pictures. And I also want to check focus, turn that on, see, after elapsed time, every uh, 60 minutes so every hour it's gonna stop imaging and it's gonna check the focus it's gonna run an autofocus that's cool 
Um, let's see, and I can also do it if it detects a temperature change or HFR increase, I can say that, and I can say within 10%. So, and what this little thing right here is, it's telling me at about um, eight o'clock, it's gonna be hitting the, the meridian or the zenith. So this is, the higher this peak means the more straight up above you this target's gonna be. If this was down here at like 51 degrees, it's something way in the north for us, northern hemisphere folks. Um, so that's what that's telling me there. Once again, there's the coordinates. So this is really cool. So let's say I'm shooting this tonight and I wanna shoot it tomorrow night and the next night. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to this uh, uh, floppy disk that we haven't used since probably like 87. 1987. Still using the symbol though. Carry on. Uh, what is that one? Stay frosty, my friend. Stay frosty, little floppy disk. Uh, click that. And you see I've already got these targets set up. And there's the name. I just click there. So every time that I want to image this, I sit down. I don't have to go through. I just point it. You can see me doing this there, right? Maybe. Uh, I don't have to go through all of this anymore. I just open up the folder. There's the target. See, I can come in here and go, I want to shoot uh, this last one that I got work. I uh, worked on NGC 7822. I can click that, click open, and look. There it is right there. Huh. So what this thing would do is it would actually, if I left this here, Nina would shoot all of this, get it done, and then it would go to this target. It would automatically go to that target. And it would do start guiding, salute a target, center target, it'd do an auto, see all that stuff's already set up. Pretty cool. Uh, what else? Oh, in the sequencing mode up here, I skipped that, forgot to. This is one after another, meaning it's gonna shoot all luminance and then all red and then all the green and all the blue. But I like to loop them. So drop down list and loop them meaning it's gonna shoot luminance, the red, then green, then blue. It's changing the filter each time. And I don't worry too much because I wanna do my, I would do, if I was doing RGB, LRGB, I would do my uh, focus on luminance since that's where all my details are. And because when you combine the red, green, and blue, you end up blurring that either with convolution or dust and scratches before you apply the luminance. So achieving some critical focus with these is not very necessary in my opinion. So that's why you can run a loop. And the reason I run a loop is because, you know, let's say, you know, a halfway through the night, the weather turns to crap. And at least you've got something of an image because you've got hopefully a good ratio of all these colors instead of just shooting one color. You can shoot just luminance and your weather goes to crap and you've shot none of these. So that's kind of my theory. Um, so that's basically the sequence tab. So once I'm satisfied with this, I'm gonna run this, I would click the play button. And it's gonna, it's gonna give me some, it may give you a warning, it may say something doesn't match. Uh, for me, it always tells me something about cooling power, I'm not really sure why. Um, but anyway, it'll basically start the sequence and run it. One thing I do miss with APT, I miss the voice. I miss it. I miss that lady telling me what was going on because this you have to, you know, I like that dual sensory thing where I'm seeing it and I'm hearing it. You, there's nothing to hear in Nina. And what you would think you would hear a woman's voice in Nina, I mean, for crying out loud. Uh, so anyway, the next tab down is your imaging tab. And you can adjust your focus. So here, this uh, tab here controls your live loop. So you see I have an exposure time set to two seconds. Uh, I'm gonna shoot, do the luminance filter, bend one by one, it's on loop on, and I can turn it on. And you see right down here, it's telling me one second, two seconds, and then it's gonna download the image. And lens gap, uh, and it comes populated, or it comes in here kind of zoomed in. So this arrow here, it says fit image to screen, there you go. What's really cool in Nina is, is it has a, a more intuitive way to scroll around and look at your image. Um, to really look at your stars, you can really zoom in here. You can do a one-to-one -one, or you can just kind of click zoom or completely fill the screen. 
Um, you could do a bullseye over your target. It's hard to see. It's easier to see at night. So these tools up here, once you turn them on, they will populate down here, right? And so here's your image. Here's your plate solving, which I'll kind of run through some of the setup here in a second, and your autofocus. This is a statistics tab. Never used it. Uh, optimal exposure calculator. Never used it. An image history. It just brings up all the pictures that you've taken. Um, basically right here, this is tracking. So it's telling you it's tracking sidereal time. It'll tell you when the meridian flip's going to be, which is basically um, almost four in the morning. Um, it gives you sequence details. So if I were actually taking a sequence, it would tell me um, what's going on here with that sequence. It gives me camera or information, tells me the temperature, how much power I'm drawing. And the neat thing about these tabs is you can unpin them. They get really big. I don't know why they do that. And you can kind of pin them in other places like that. See how it, where it's going to put it at? Or you can go up here like that or right there. So that's kind of cool that you can, you know, kind of actively adjust these tabs around like that. Um, and like I was telling you here, PhD2, the graph is already in here. So once you're imaging and you're looking at your images popping, populating your graphs down here. So, and I know that I've done that before in APT where I've had them both up at the same time. So in the options tab, you've got your general options. You got a slew of colors, man. You can jazz this thing up. Uh, I really haven't dove into that. You know, I went ahead and I want and I set my latitude and longitude in here. I'm in the Northern hemisphere. Uh, what else? Equipment tab. This is where you're going to set your camera and you've got some advanced settings in here, your telescope. So I need to actually change this because I'm, I'm using a different scope. So I should create a new profile. Uh, but you see, I can just backspace this out and I can just use the same profile and type mead uh, 80 millimeter. What? Stop. And I'm going to change the focal length to 384 millimeters because that's what I'm doing my reducer. Uh, your focuser, here's your information. See autofocus step size set 10. That's why it's so small. I can change that to 50. And then that's going to basically adjust the step size. Every time you hit that course, it's going to move ahead or back 50 steps. Um, what else? What else? There's some weather stuff in here. Here's where you're going to want to adjust your or enter in your filters that you have. And you just double click and change the name. Your guiding settings pretty much come populated uh, once you choose PhD2. Here's your planetary. You know, you've got several different ones to choose from, so I've got Stellarium in there. And it pretty much picked up the port. Your imaging tab, this, this tab right here is where you're going to set how your images are gonna look when they're in file names. So I've basically, I've got um, the date and what kind of the image name, which is nice and uh, what filter it was using, and I think the duration, but this is where you would choose how you want to set that up. Um, I'm going to save image as a FITS file because I'm using a mono camera. Auto Meridian Flip um, works well. The, um, I've got it enabled. I would suggest giving it at least 15 minutes past the Meridian. I had it shorter and it got confused because I didn't give it enough time to really get past the Meridian. Uh, so I increased it to 15 minutes and what else and then scope settle time I've got it to 20 seconds you see it says seconds and minutes uh, pause before the meridian I got five minutes in here so what happens is, is it's uh, about 20 minutes there between the 15 minutes past and the five minutes before about 20 minutes of no image taking just so you know be aware of that and then here's your image options. That's just for your view, your live view. Um, in your sequence tab, I have right down here in the sequence tab, that's where you want to park the mount when sequence ends and then warm camera when sequence ends. Um, and sometimes I turn that on and off. If I'm shooting a quick target, 
I don't really know what I want to shoot next. I'm just shooting something quickly until the stuff that I want to shoot gets up. Well, I don't want it to park and I don't want it to cool the camera down because I don't want to have to warm the camera, or I don't want to warm the camera up because I don't want to cool it back down. So I turn that off. But once I set up and I close this lid and I'm letting it go all night, I want to make sure that I'm uh, hitting these two so that way when I come out in the morning, uh, the scope is parked and the camera is warmed up. Plate solving tab. I've got uh, plate solve two. A lot of people say as tap is better, but I can tell you from experience, as tap needs some pristine stars, no trails, good stars, and any little deviance from that, it will not solve. Plate solve two works very well for me. And then the blind solver is astronomy.net, and you know all you've got to do here when you go into plate solve two is find the path where all of the, uh, the sky survey maps are located. And then that's where you would click this little dot button here. What else? Uh, and then here's some stuff that you can set up. You, I, will, I have my exposure time pretty standard to 10 seconds. Filter would be current. I always want to play it solve, bend one by one. I don't worry about the gain. And then these, uh, tolerances here, number of attempts, stuff like that. That's all default. Uh, and that's basically it. So back to the imaging tab. That's kind of how it's set up. Um, and I was able to really set it up, you know, right off the bat, definitely had some quirks with it. Definitely, um, which you saw live on camera, that unpark scope kind of thing is uh, a little quirky. But other than that, it works really well, and I would hope that APT eventually would have an autofocuser uh, in it, because I really do like it, I'm really comfortable with it. But this is a great backup program, especially one that's uh, free, open source. All right, so that's a quick overview of that, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave them in a comment. Don't forget to quit, quit? Don't forget to quit, just quit. <laughs> or you can click. <laughs> One of the two, you can click, subscribe, or like, if you want. I don't think I've ever said that before. I'm almost at 900 subscribers, so again, super appreciative, and again, super thankful for people checking on me. I know it's been a while, but uh, I'm back, doing my thing, and uh, until then, clear skies and clear minds.